so in this presentation, I'm just going to outline um, my work into touch, textiles and dementia. Um, so I've got supervisors from both the School of Design and Creative Arts, as well as the School of Sports, Exercise and Health Science. Um, and my current kind of working title is Can the use of repetitive textiles processes improve well-being to become an alternative model of treatment aiming to prevent cognitive decline associated with Alzheimer's disease? Just trying to... Oh, there you go. Um, so I'm just going to outline some of my previous experience. So I trained at Loughborough as a textile designer and then went to work for a um, fashion supplier where I was uh, producing knitted um, accessories and socks. Um, but I found there was a disconnect with actual sort of tactile processes um, and I wanted to kind of go back so I, into education. So I went and did a master's. Um, where I was looking at the way that you could kind of use textiles and touch um, for like a wider social context. So um, I've got a sort of family a family sort of connection with dementia and neurological conditions like multiple sclerosis. So um, I wanted to use textiles um, as a way to kind of impact various memory based conditions. Um, so I currently work as a freelance uh, embroiderer for Alexander McQueen and also run workshops um, where I'm looking at print, different material processes, and I'm really focusing on engagement with kind of tactile textiles processes um, within communities. So I've started to look at art-based interventions and cognitive fun functions. Um, so I've looked at several studies, but I'm going to just highlight um, a study by the Creative Health Inquiry. Um, so Within this report, um, they looked at a range of a group of people aged between 50 and 90, um, divided into study groups. Um, so they were working with sort of um, groups that were doing brisk walking, Sudoku, and life drawing. Um, within this study, um, the most improved in terms of cognitive function and well-being were the study that did the art-based intervention. Um, and it was also a way for them to keep physically and socially active. Um, so while I did my MA, I was working with groups of people, um, de various groups of people living with dementia. So I did, I ran some sessions in collaboration with the Alzheimer's Society where I was doing, every two weeks I was running workshops. Um, so this was within the community. And then I also did some standalone workshops at um, sheltered accommodations so for people living in care. Um, so within the memory cafes, uh, the people that where the participants had a formal diagnosis of dementia, um, but were living at home. So they'd have carers or sort of family care. Um, so my initial kind of idea for the workshops was to work um, on large sort of patchwork pieces uh, oops, where they'd be stitching, um, working with sort of very tactile processes, um, cut work collages, um, but I found that when I started that and when I was trying to control it too much, um, it kind of, it, it discouraged um, community and kind of working together. And it also was a little bit restrictive for the participants. So I started to work as more of a user-led approach. And this allowed participants to become more creative and engage with materials that they chose, depending on kind of what they were more drawn to. Um, so I found that these sessions were really a beneficial way of people socially interacting and gaining a sense of identity. Um, and they also became a kind of catalyst for sharing memories um, and for conversation and positive well-being. So some of the participants, um, for example, John um, started telling me about how he'd worked in the hosiery industry and had a really interest in sort of vast interest in textiles. And then Vera was creating hand puppets that she could work with sort of her uh, great grandson and things like that. So it was encouraging that sense of community. Um, so the workshops I did, the one-off workshops I did with sheltered communities um, were very different. Uh, I was working with people who were living in care um, with sort of more advanced stage dementia. Um, so there was restrictions and limitations in terms of materials and processes they could use and also their ability to kind of interact with each other. Um, however, I found that these sessions um, 
people could engage with materials. So there was different processes. So they continue to do sort of collage and work with tactile processes. Um, and the sessions did offer an opportunity for people to express kind of memories. And I was speaking to them directly about things. Um, so the woman with the wavy line had a kind of group of um, materials that she'd collected from traveling and things like that. So it was a kind of opportunity for um, sort of discussion. So um, I believe there's a need for interventions because the number of people living with dementia is set to increase. Um, so throughout my PhD, I'm aiming to target modifiable risk factors like depression, social isolation and lack of physical activities. Um, I believe that to make a sort of impact, I'd like to assess the effectiveness of textile interventions. And from sort of reviewing early evidence, a lot of art-based interventions don't kind of measure effectiveness. Um, so art-based are beneficial because they can be used as a way to kind of limit social isolation, improve cognition, um, identity, I think as evidenced in some of the workshops I've previously done, um, they can kind of facilitate emotional memories, prevent loneliness, and in reports I've been reading, um, they are linked to kind of positive well-being and physical health. Um, I've specifically chosen textiles because textiles um, has different sort of qualities to other art-based processes. Um, it's something that isn't limiting people with any ability and not necessarily people that have creative kind of don't consider themselves to be creative can kind of work on as well um, but also with the kind of tactile and physical approach um, it can be beneficial for people with various physical needs um, and various psychological and physical needs um, so I'm going to draw attention to dementia and imagination who are a group that work with art-based um, sort of workshops for people with dementia so they've started to sort of notice um, the, the impact that art can make um, and the difference art can make on people living with dementia. Um, and although they've not necessarily reviewed the effectiveness, they have noticed an improved life for people with dementia and their carers. So um, within sort of art-based therapies from research I've been reading into, there's not a lot of textiles based interventions. Um, so what I'm interested in is kind of looking at textiles and the way that processes and connection to materials can be assessed. Um, so current art-based um, therapies are things like drama, literature, singing, digital arts, visual arts, music, um, dance, sensory materials, dancing and museum visits. Uh, and currently art-based therapies are kind of um, run by, specifically by therapists, but I wanted to create interventions that can take place um, in community groups, care homes, NHS trusts, and can be run by a variety of different sort of care providers like nurses, carers, art practitioners, um, volunteers, as well as therapists. Um, so as part of the kind of initial stages of um, my PhD, I've started to look at um, a systematic review which is assessing the effectiveness of art-based interventions in adults with dementia. So the reason I've um, sort of specified art-based and, and I'm looking at it as a kind of generic sort of umbrella term um, is because art-based art kind of, I'm looking to see whether it includes textiles within that kind of area, um, but it's kind of, it's quite limited at the amount of textiles um, processes that are being looked at. Um, so kind of the PICOs that I'm starting to look at, I'm looking at participants that are um, older adults, um, age 65 years plus with a dementia um, diagnosis who either live in community or um, institutional care. Um, the interventions I'm looking at are sort of visual art based interventions, which are things that include painting, um, sculpture, photography, filmmaking. Um, and I'm looking at comparing either passive, so no treatment or care, or um, other non-pharmacological interventions. And um, my primary outcomes that I'm gonna be looking at within the systematic review are sort of cognition, um, psychosocial wellbeing, um, adverse effects, behavior, uh, and secondary to that, I'm looking at sort of quality of life, neuroimaging and care outcomes. Um, but I've, I'm, I'm starting to identify sort of 
gap um, in knowledge in terms of textiles based interventions and how effective they are and kind of the areas that I could start to look at in terms of what materials are used, colours that are used and the kind of idea of um, material experience rather than just a kind of aesthetic um, interaction with sort of art and art based sort of interventions in that way. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at so far with my PhD, but it's quite early on. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much, Gussie. That's wonderful. Um, do people have questions in the room for Gussie on any aspects of her presentation? Um, you sort of using that kind of um, research for people with a learning disability to help with shoes. Um, Kindred somewhat, but also as they get older, they are more prone to them to having uh, a gaze of dementia. Yeah, I think it's definitely something I'm interested in. I think I mentioned briefly that I've got an interest sort of family connection with neurological conditions. So uh, multiple sclerosis affects kind of memory and things like that. So I'm aware that this could be something that could be used in lots of different contexts. Um, I think I'm focusing it on dementia at the moment because obviously it's so broad. I could kind of, there's lots of different processes and lots of different areas that I think it could sort of go into. But I think if I'm, because I'm focusing on dementia, I'm trying to find it like an, an effective and make an impact kind of thing with that. So, but I think definitely I could see it being really broad. <laughs> Great. Do we have any questions from our guests online? Maybe we have a question here. Oh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, thank you. What's your plan for recruiting people with dementia? Um, I think I'm going to be trying to work with charities as a starting point, but I think because I'm trying to look at community groups as well as groups in care, um, I think I'm going to have to sort of approach different people. So community group based sort of charities as well as sort of uh, care providers and NHS providers and things like that. Um, but that is something that is going to be quite a big task, I think, to <laughs> approach. So yeah. Well, something something I need to think about. <laughs> just yeah. to suggest him on that. Um, yeah. There's a site run by the NIHR called Joint Dementia Joint. Center. Yeah. Um, it might not be what you're looking for, is it? I think maybe you want one group and a charity might be the way to go. But yeah. Joint Dementia Research, if you sign up for that, um, put forward a project proposal, yeah. someone will kind of talk to you and you'll be able to find possibly hundreds of people that meet your eligibility criteria for the study. And I found it very, very helpful for recruiting people with dementia for research. Oh, that's right. I didn't actually bring a pen up, but I'm gonna, I'll write, I'll jot that down. Thank you. That's really useful. Thank you. Shall I? Okay. Yes. Thank you.